Welcome back to the shop. Today I want to show you a streamlined process for changing phasers on the 5.4 liter 3 valve engine. As you probably already know, these phasers fail quite often. It's a bad design uh, with the locking pin inside of here and the oil pump that's built into these engines. And no matter what your vehicle you have, 04 to 2014, they're going to fail eventually, some at pretty low mileage. Now I have a whole video on how to change these things out per the Ford workshop manual, and I'll link to that down below. And that's a long, drawn-out process, though, and that's why today I want to show you a streamlined process that's a little riskier, uh, but it definitely takes about half the time because we're skipping a few steps, but we're also going to introduce some precautionary measures to make sure the cam timing does not move while this is off of there. So today we have an 05 Ford Expedition we'll be demonstrating this on. Uh, the procedure, once the valve cover's off, is the same for all the 543 valve engines. It's getting the valve cover off that may differ from model year and, um, and model. Um, so just get the valve cover off and then we'll jump to changing the actual phaser out from the engine. Okay, now the best way i found to do this without the, with the least chance of having an issue afterwards is to get the camshaft on the left hand side to this point. And what I mean by that is the two intakes right here, okay, on cylinder number five, they're pointing down at, I'd say, the eight o'clock position, okay? But more importantly, the one exhaust cam lobe is pointing up at the 11 o'clock. If you think of it as this top of this right here, it's 12 o'clock, directly up, because these you know, cylinder heads are at an angle. This is 12 o'clock. You want that cam load be, load to be at 11. And the reason why is because normally you would take out three roller followers for three valves that are gonna be an issue when we're at this position as far as um, possibly under tension and can kick the cam over and out of time, okay? Only three. The rest of these cam lobes on here all the way down are in a, pretty much a neutral position at this point. You can even look at them. They're, they're you know, on base circle or coming off a of base circle. So just those three might have an issue. So there's less of a chance of this cam whenever we pull off the phaser. So for the driver's side uh, head, you're gonna want just like this, exhaust camshaft lobe, 11 o'clock. You can go ahead and start changing the phaser out. Now as far as the passenger side goes, you want the intake camshaft lobe, these two right here, at the one o'clock position. This one's heading towards two, but you get the idea. These two at the one o'clock position, with this right here up and down being 12. Okay, at this point, our camshaft is in the proper position. It's more of a neutral position. So we can go ahead and stick our piece of cheese down into the timing chain area here to wedge it and hold it in place while we pull the phaser off. Now you don't need to pull the, front, the whole front cover off like this. This is part of a whole timing job I'm doing on this vehicle. So this is great though for demonstration purposes. You can really see what's going on with this piece of cheese and how it feels and how to stick it into there. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up through the valve cover area there where you pulled it off and you have a little pocket here, okay? And you're gonna match that angle up and you're gonna come in behind here, okay? and get it down in there. And it's gonna be tight, but once you get it past that area, you're good. And then you're gonna feed it down in here, and you'll be able to see some of this um, up inside of there, okay? But basically, it's made to go down in here, and at an angle, i get a little bit of angle going there. It'll go down in there, hit your little end of it there, I like to do that really wedge it in there okay so what it's doing is it's pinching the chain right here while pressing it against both the guides and it holds it from this point on so everything down below retains its tension and everything up here can flop around while you get the phaser off works out great and uh, the kits not that much I'll link to it down below for you guys so you know exactly what to get now at this point we can go ahead and start taking our phaser off 
Now there's one last step I like to do before taking this phaser off of here, and that is to measure the depth on the backside of the phaser to the cam cap, and I also uh, clean off the cam, and I mark the relation on there, just in case the cam goes whoop, like that, and it pops over, uh, we know which direction it went, based on the position of the, the white marking on there, if it went to the left or right. Um, so we'll mark it, and we'll measure it, and I'll show you that too. On the back side of the phaser here, where it mounts up to the camshaft, what you want to do is measure the backing plate to the front of the cam, the first cam cap right there. That's the easiest way to get a measurement off of there. Now the reason being is because a lot of people, they jam these things on there, they find it hard to get it on there or, and lamp that locking pin in the back side of the phaser where it sticks into the camshaft and they misalign it or they shear it off, or they break it, or they smash it or something, and they're always coming to me with problems. Well, what I do in general is I'll either measure it or I'll spin it around and look at it and make sure that everything looks right on here. You can see this line right here. On there, you can look at it easily and see if it's cocked on there. But the easier way to do it, and to get an actual measurement, measurement to make sure you're fully onto the camshaft and the pins fully inserted is to get a measurement before you ever take it off of there. So we'll just do it as close as possible. And let's see what I got on mine. Uh, 25, 26 millimeters. That's what I have. And this is an original one that's installed correctly, no issues. So you want to take that measurement and make sure you're fully back onto the camshaft before you ever snug down that bolt and ruin the pin on there. Now the other thing I do, bust out the old brake clean, okay, and we're going to clean off the cam cap here, and sure, the first lobe on here, okay, and we're going to make a, a paint mark on here across the two. Okay, so you can see exactly where they should be going back together. And this way, if this cam pops over to the left and right, it's gonna happen so fast you'll never be able to see where it went. And you'll be guessing. Um, you could, there's so many cam lobes, you'll be, you'll be guessing, believe me, unless you got it on camera. So this way, we know what direction it popped over to once we were jerking around with this phaser on here. So at this point, we have our measurement, 26 millimeters. We have our marking. Our um, cheese is wedged in there so it holds the chain. We can start taking this thing off. That's all there is to it. This is a quick method. It's a little more risky, um, but these are some precautionary measures that we can do to make sure there's no problems afterwards. Okay, one last marking on here. What you're gonna wanna do is mark the timing chain to the camshaft phaser relation on here. Now you can mark it anywhere on there, but you have to transfer those marks over to the new phaser and line them up. So the best way to do it is to make sure you mark one of the uh, timing marks on here to the phaser relation. That way it's constant on both the old and the new phaser, and you just simply line it up and ain't that hard. So we'll be picking the R on here as our relation. A little brake clean on there to make sure the uh, paint pen actually sticks. And you can mark that, but the way you're concentrating on is getting this link all painted up. Just the one link it's directly in line with right now. Not doing this weird overlapping stuff. Sometimes, uh, just in case hands get dirty and wipe it off of there, I'll paint it all the way around. Look how bad these are. This is why I'm doing timing on this one. You see how loose these links are on here? I think it's just worn out of this engine. But this is a good demonstration vehicle for you guys. All right, we're all painted up. At this point, it's a good idea to make sure your cheese is still wedged in there. Looks good. And we'll zing this thing off of here. It's a 15 mil. Make sure I was in reverse. Okay. Got a bleeder. Okay, so at that point, at this point, you can take it off of there. Okay. And you 
And then you simply, I'm blocking the light there. You simply, there you go, there you go, there you go. Okay, see this? Being very gentle not to disturb that camshaft. Okay. Like that. And then you'll be able to drop it down in there and work this up and off of there and pull the phaser out. And here's that little pin that I was talking about. You need to make sure it's lined up with that groove in the cam. As you can see right now, it's, the cam's pretty darn stable, being there's only three that are under tension right now. So this would normally just get flopped over to the side there, and you just leave it there until you're ready for your new camshaft phaser. Okay, now going back in, um, you already know the R for my current setup is the timing mark on there. So we can kind of just get it down in here Okay, and get this chain out of the way. And we can start lining up the mark on there. Now you're gonna have to go down in here and line up our paint mark, okay? Get all that set, get all the teeth in there, just like so. And then you come around the back side here and you make sure you can line it up in there. It's going to be a tight fit. You may have to move it back and forth just a little bit. And then once you know you got it lined up on there, what's going to help is your phaser bolt. That will start sucking it back nice and evenly, almost like pressing it onto there. Now I'm reusing the old phaser bolt because this is just for demonstration. Uh, but make sure you, re you put a new one in there. It comes in the kit. Okay, so we're lined up on there. Keep tightening this phaser bolt up. Okay. You see how I straighten it out on there? And that'll help us line everything up on here. Now at this point, it's going to be tight. But I can look behind here and I could see it's going into the groove on there. And boom, I had a dead stop all by hand. No chance of shearing off that nub on there if we line it up and we do it by hand because we'll know it's seating on there. So real quick, same thing as before, before we even tighten it, we can check we have that measurement. Let me know we're on there all the way. Now at this point, the, the phaser is mated to the camshaft, okay? So it, it's part of it now, and the phaser's holding on. It can't fall off. Timing, it's all on each one of the gears in here perfectly, okay? You can now concentrate on getting this cheese out of here. Because if you go ahead and you start torquing this down and then torque to yielding it, which is stretching it, you might wedge our cheese in here where it's so hard to get out of there. So let's get it out of here now. As you'll see, it's, it's still going to be a pain. But in most cases, it comes out just like that. And then you just wiggle it past all this here once again. Okay, real quick on the back side here, just to show you up close. You can see that line is parallel, running parallel to the camshaft sprocket there, the phaser. And it's not cocked in there, plus we measured it. And like I said, you'll be able to see the phaser getting almost pressed onto there and that little gap in there gone. Now over here, like I said, get the paint off of there. A little engine oil on these lobes, going back together and you'll be good to go. Okay, everything's back together in gold. The last thing you gotta do is torque these down to 30 foot pounds. Perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and turn this bolt an additional 90 degrees to stretch it out uh, for the torque to yield feature on there. So we'll clean off the, uh, the grease on there. We'll, we'll mark it. And this is where one of those finer tipped 
um, paint pens come in handy. It's basically up and down. And then you simply turn it an additional 90. Just keep checking it, make sure you don't go too far. This isn't an exact science, but you do want to get there. A little more, hit a compression stroke there. And get your paint off of here and that's all there is to it everything's changed out torqued down right and tight everything's cleaned up and oiled up at this point you can go ahead and put your valve cover back on and make sure you put some engine sealant right here where the t-joint is between the front cover which mine is missing and the cylinder head There's a little bit of sealant right there some engine sealant i'll link to it down below the good stuff uh besides that though th that's that's how quick you can change one of these out if you follow these procedures and avoid a few of the other steps that Ford has us doing, um, that can be a really, really quick procedure. And you can get rid of that freaking annoying knocking noise once and for all. Now, my advice in general is after you do change one of these out is to change your oil over to 530. A lot of guys have run 530 since brand new and these phaser wear concerns do not happen. So there's something to it being the thicker oil and, and not having the wear issues. Same reason they run a hotter oil or um, a thicker oil in turbo based engines for the durability and the extra added protection. So um, give it a thought. I'm doing it on this one and I do it on all my customers' vehicles. Hope this helps.